car, Peugeot 205 GLD, upgraded to a GTI, and then, oh, too many to count. I've had Vauxhall, I've had a Rover 75. It's probably been, what, 15, 15 cars in nearly as many years. 205 GLD, very, very efficient, but yeah, quite small. Really, really very small. I had to have the window winder in a kind of certain angle, so it would always be like a, a crack of window at the top because I had, that was the only way I could get my knee between the door and the wheel. So this whole size and car thing has been a, a running trend for 20 years. I've never gone out of my way to purchase a kind of life-changing car, if that makes sense. I've always stayed quite sensibly within budget and it's only been the approach, distant approach of my 40th birthday that's made me think, right, come on, it's time to, it's time to think about a serious car. First time I've been on a track, and so first time on a track in a couple of 80 plus thousand pound supercars, you know, your, your adrenaline's pumping. It was great being in that combination of a fantastic car and a good instructor. It's so different to road driving, you know, all those kind of different skills, and I, and I, and I love learning something new. I definitely got better during the day because I think the swap in the cars was the right way round. If I'd gone from the Mercedes into the Maserati, it would have been tricky, I think, to have progressed the way I did. Whereas I was kind of learning the line, learning the track and learning the technique in the Maserati. And then when I got into the Merc, it was like, okay, this suddenly got easier. Whereas in the other way around, I think it would have got harder, actually. I wanted the Maserati to be, to be perfect because it looks so good. I mean, it looks perfection, but the problem eventually, once Jason encouraged me to push it harder and harder, was that it, it then became a bit unsure, whereas the Merc was just solid. <laughs> the Westfield was, would, be, would be good as a, a joke, but that's it. It's just, you know, like so many cars, they're just not built for people my size. You reckon you can do 500 metres quicker than I can do a lap? That's what it said on the script. You haven't got <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, how can you tell? Look, I'm a stealthy athlete. As you saw, I was so sure I could beat him. Well, I'm going already. 500 metres is a long way, and for a guy who probably isn't rowing fit, you know, like rowing, you need big arms, big legs, big lungs, and he's got none of those, frankly and I was sure I could beat him. In, in the Merc round that track, I was sure. So when I turned up backwards, I was convinced he was going to say, oh, that's 450 metres. 500. Did you do it? Yeah. So fair play, fair play. He did, he did definitely win the challenge. Now I was going to put you in next to me for another three laps, right? I don't think I can do it then. Vincent? This is bloody hard work, this. It's still a hard decision, but I, I'd, I'd still take the keys to the Merc now. And I think it, it depends whether you're going to judge a car by that last two or three percent. Like, are you ever going to push that car on the road that hard? I hope, you know, I hope I would never do it. And so you've got to establish, right, well, is it worth the extra money? Am I going to use it that way? Am I going to take it to a track day? The Maserati's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, but I don't know whether I'd ever feel that I settled for something that was, you know, lovely to look at, but a bit lacking just in that last little bit.